Hey everybody, it's Mr. Smeeds, and today we're talking about topic 3.1, specialists and generalist species. So what we have here are two closely related species, the raccoon and the red panda. And although they're very closely related and they look very similar, they have very different habitat and food needs. So the red panda is a specialist species, or sometimes referred to as a niche specialist. And this is because it has a very narrow range of tolerance. It needs very specific habitat and food source. That's bamboo. Red pandas don't digest cellulose very well, so they need to eat huge quantities of bamboo in order to survive. Raccoons, on the other hand, have an extremely varied diet, so they're able to eat all sorts of foods. They can eat things like plants and mushrooms. Uh, they can eat the eggs of birds and reptiles. They can even eat small insects and amphibians. So they're far more adaptable or far more generalized, so we refer to them as a generalist species. Here are our learning objectives, essential knowledge, and the skills we'll be practicing today. So our objective today is to be able to identify the difference between generalist and specialist species. And our essential knowledge is to know that specialist species are advantaged in habitats that remain constant, whereas generalist species are advantaged in habitats that are constantly changing. And the skill that we'll practice with this essential knowledge at the end of the video will be explaining an environmental concept. So here we can look at the ecological tolerance of specialists and generalist species. Specialist species like the panda are going to have a really narrow range of ecological tolerance. They don't tolerate changing ecosystems very well because they have a really specific food requirement, that's bamboo. So if an environmental disturbance disrupts the ability of that forest to produce bamboo, those conditions are no longer really hospitable to the panda. So it's less able to adapt to new conditions. The generalist species, on the other hand, have a very large range of tolerance. So they've got a broad niche. This is going to make them less prone to extinction and more likely to be invasive. That's because they have a really, really broad food availability. And so they can easily switch their diet to a different food source if one of their sources becomes less available. They're very adaptable. But this also makes them very likely to be invasive. If they come to an ecosystem, they're very competitive and they can utilize a broad range of resources, which means they compete with a broad range of organisms. And so generalists are far more likely to be invasive, whereas specialists are far more likely to be disturbed by invasive species. Next, we have a table here, or a sort of graphic that shows the different characteristics of each. We have the koala bear and the panda bear in the specialist category. Remember, this means they have really specific and specialized needs. This makes them less adaptable Another way to think about specialists is they're very picky. They can't really uh, easily change or shift to a new resource because they have such narrow uh, tolerance. This again means that they are at a disadvantage when conditions are changing. So the generalists are at an advantage when conditions change because they can simply shift to a new food or habitat resource. They use a variety of resources. So this gives them a high range of tolerance. The specialists on the other hand, they're easily disturbed or easily disrupted. So they're far more likely to be endangered, as is the case with the koala and the panda bear. And they're far more likely to go extinct, unfortunately, because when their ecosystems are threatened or disturbed, they just don't possess that adaptability. And so we'll wrap up today by practicing an FRQ here that will involve concept explanation. That's our skill. And so you want to identify, so just say it, one simple characteristic of specialist species, but then explain how does that characteristic make them more likely to become extinct than generalist species. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching today. Don't forget to like this video if it was helpful and subscribe for future apes video notes. And as always, think like a mountain, write like a scholar.